Hey, this is David Rankin. I'm back. Um, it's been a while since I've done an update for anything astronomy related, so I figured it'd be fun to do a little video showing off uh, my observatory that I spent the summer building. Um, I'm still heavily involved in astronomy. I now work uh, professionally in astronomy for a uh, survey called Catalina Sky Survey here in southern Arizona, and we are the front lines of planetary defense looking for asteroids and comets that pose a threat to the Earth, so I'll probably end up doing a video about that later. Um, kind of show you guys the workings of CSS, which is pretty cool. But uh, I also still spend a lot of time from my house using my telescope to look for asteroids and comets as well. Um, so over the summertime, I decided I got tired of carrying all my equipment outside every night and breaking it down and setting it up. And so I decided to build an observatory. So um, i uh, take you guys on a little tour of my backyard micro observatory. All right, so here it is, Saguaro Observatory. What's an observatory without a name, right? So, um, I was working with pretty tight tolerances here when I designed this thing. I did it all in Blender. And you can see I'm kind of packed between this walkway and the wall there. And there was just enough room to put an observatory up that uh, just has a telescope. So I'm not sitting in here running this thing at all. I run it remotely from in the house. And um, it's just a telescope home. And looking online, I liked the uh, raised style so it sits off the ground a ways and yeah it's pretty tightly confined small observatory you can call it a micro observatory if you want uh, one issue i had is the rail for this wall would have hit the walkway so i had to set it in a little bit i'll talk about that when i open it up um yeah so things are just set on concrete up off the ground and that's the home for the scope yeah, it took me a couple weeks to build it, it wasn't too bad <coughs> Opened up, got a little hatch here, hatch door. So I run an AC during the summertime because it gets so hot here. You know, it can be 110, 115 on some days and I don't want my telescope equipment getting that hot. So I try to keep it around 85, 90 degrees in here. Um, and that, that seems to work pretty well. Uh, that's the vent going off for the, uh, the AC unit there. All right. And so looking at the equipment here, I run a EQ8 or the Orion version, which is the HDX 110, has 110 pound capacity, which is really nice. Just counter counterweights there, so no big deal, whatever, it's typical. And then the Rasa 11, this is the version one. Uh, a lot of people didn't like this version because it had focus issues. Um, this one hasn't given me much trouble. Uh, I've been very happy with it. It's a very nice scope, and it has a very wide field of view and goes pretty deep, which is nice. Um, and then I'm running the QHY 268 monochrome. And that paired with this telescope gives me about a three degree square field of view per image. And so when I'm looking for asteroids and comets, which is what I spent all my time doing, um, I don't need to shoot color. That's just gonna cut my signal down. And I can cover quite a bit of sky with this camera shooting three square, degree, three square degrees per image as I'm scanning the sky. So this is a really good setup for this type of work very happy with it uh this september i discovered a new near-earth asteroid and a new comet uh from my home here in tucson which is pretty crazy because you know um i'm not in the middle of the city but i'm also not out of the city so if i look to my west you know the skies are probably portal seven and if i look to my east i could probably get down to portal four and uh, with this telescope i can i can drop through about mag uh, 19 uh 19.2 and that's Pretty much all you need for, for the type of work that I'm doing. Um, I'm not going to find a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean you can't find anything at all. You definitely can still find things. Um, poured the concrete pier, of course, uh, with a pier adapter for the for the mount. So that uh, that's rock solid, straight down into the ground down here. So that uh, and it's isolated from the observatory itself. I just put some spray foam in there. So the AC is going to kick on here. I'm going to turn that off for you over here. Okay. So yeah. Uh, there's a locking mechanism for the roof, which kind of helps keep it locked in place right there. So when I want to open, I just pull that down. And then the roof itself has, you know, the rails, typical um, roll-off roof with the wheels. Uh, but in this case, like I said, the rail was offset. So I had to put a secondary rail on the inside here. So that's the wall. There's wheels along that wall as well. So as it opens, it's going to transfer the weight load from the wall to this inset rail here, which avoided 
block in the walkway, which is nice. So, and it takes very little effort to open it. Just lightly tug with a couple fingers. Got some insulation on the roof there. Boop. Okay, so that's open. So yeah, you can see the, the load was transferred here to that rail. And now the telescope is exposed to the outside world. And that's, uh, that's the idea. All right, so what else we got going on here? Yeah, so we get uh, major windstorms here in southern Arizona. So you can see those two. It's a hook and eye latch, so those would be eye hooks. And then here's the here's the hook that goes inside them when it closes. So that's kind of like an auto safety measure. Uh, as the roof is shut, it uh, keeps the roof locked down. So if the wind really kicks up, you know, during a microburst, we can have 70, 80 mile per hour winds. And so it'll keep the roof from blowing off. And uh, you know, it survived the summer, uh, pretty active monsoon season without any issues at all. So it works well. I've been happy with it. All right, let's look at the other equipment here. Run in a EAF on the back for autofocus. These things are fantastic. Uh, works just fine with the setup that I use. And let's see, we got the, uh, this is just a Raspberry Pi 4 and it is running Astroberry. So Astroberry is, I don't know, it's kind of similar to ASI Air if you've ever used one of those. It uh, just runs over Wi-Fi and it has an Indy server built in. So you connect all your equipment in here and basically I can just connect over the Wi-Fi from in the house and run everything inside with K-Stars and Ecos, which are also two open source free packages for running telescopes. Um, I love them, they're fully scriptable. So I can, I can fully script a, uh, a survey set and walk away. And this thing will autofocus, take all the images, do all the magic for me. I did modify the Raspberry Pi with a external antenna that helps it stay connected from in the house here. Um, it's rock solid though. It stays connected all night without issue. Uh, I'm using a gaming Wi-Fi 6 gaming router and uh, you know, it's a ways away. You know, my, my router is through probably three, four walls that direction. So I don't have any issues, it's nice. Uh, this, is a, this has been a great setup. I have to worry about running ethernet cable out here. So that's basically an overview of the equipment. And so let's close this back up. It's the sun I don't like on my stuff. So the next upgrade I'm working on now is going to be an auto roof opener. And uh, I've already got that mocked up. So I'll talk about that here for a second. So this is going to be the auto roof opener right here. And uh, this is a setup that runs in K-Stars and Ecos um, with Indy. Uh, it's called Roll Off Roof INO. And you load up some software on a Arduino Uno, install some sensors. In this case, I have two read sensors that are magnetic switches. One for open, one for close. This is a 12 volt, 10 amp DC motor controller and then a high torque 12 volt motor. Um, this has all been tested. I've got it all set up and working right. I really just need to install the rail over here and then print the gear that's gonna drive the rail. And I will be able to fully open and close this thing from in the house, which will be fantastic. So yeah, this has been a fun endeavor. Um, I'm 40 now, so hauling all this heavy equipment out every night to, to use it is just not feasible anymore. So I finally broke down and just decided I was gonna design and build an observatory. And this is what I came up with. It's about as tight tolerances as you can get while running an 11 inch Rasa. And um, has a pretty small footprint, it stays cool, protects my equipment without issue. Get a little bit of dust in there, but the dust cover, you know, mitigates that just fine. And uh, yeah, no issues at all with it. It's been fantastic so far. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below.